there, and welcome to our beginner's guide to V-Ray for Rhino, aimed to help you get started with the software and rendering in no time. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to post-process your image inside the V-Ray frame buffer for some really impressive results. Please make sure to download our project files linked in the video description so you can explore the scene at your own pace. All right, let's dive in. Before we start rendering, there are a few small steps we need to take. We need to add some render elements to have enough information to work with in post. First, open up the V-Ray Asset Editor and head to the Render Elements tab. Click on it, and while pressing the Control key, select Back to Beauty, Light Mix, and Crypto Mat. These elements will provide us enough information to work with. Back to Beauty gives us all the individual elements that create our image. Light Mix provides info about the lights in our scene, enabling us to change their color and intensity later, and Crypto Mat will provide picture-perfect masks of every object in the scene. Before we begin rendering, I'll make a small adjustment to the Light Mix properties by changing its grouping type to Group Instances. This will allow me to control all instances of the same light through one layer. Now that we're all set, let's get to rendering our scene. With our scene rendered, let's see how we can enhance the image further. If you want to join in and bypass the rendering step, just open the provided image from the project files, go to File, then Load Image. If you're not seeing the Layers menu of the V-Ray frame buffer, you can press the Control and L keys together to expand the menu. Now let's go to the Layers stack. Here, we have different types of color corrections that can significantly improve our image. A good place to start is with the Filmic Tone Map. This will compress the highlights and add some nice contrast. Feel free to try out different color corrections and make adjustments if needed. Next, let's add a Curves Adjustment layer. We can use this to alter the shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. Let's carefully adjust the handles so that we slightly lift the mid-tones. This will brighten the overall image without overexposing the highlights or lifting the shadows too much. Each layer comes with an Opacity Control. A value of 0 means the layer won't have any effect, while a value of 1 means it'll have full effect. You can also change each layer's blending mode, which alters how the layer blends with the one below it. We can use the white balance layer to remove any color tint caused by the lighting, change the temperature to make the image warmer or colder, or use the color picker to specify a color tint to remove. We can also add a color balance layer to adjust the colors of the shadows, mid-tones and highlights separately, allowing us to easily change the overall mood of our image. Let's utilize the crypto mat we added earlier by adding a hue saturation layer. Then right-click on it and add a new crypto mat mask. Now select the pick icon. Now you can select any object in the frame buffer and get an alpha mask of it. For instance, let's select the grass. You can check your selection by clicking on the Show Preview when selected button. Now, any changes to the hue saturation layer will only affect the selected object. Feel free to experiment and adjust the other objects as you like. You may recall that we added the Light Mix Render element earlier. Let's see how we can use that. Switch to Light Mix mode in the V-Ray frame buffer. From here, we can easily adjust the intensity and color of individual lights in real time. For example, we can easily change this day scene into a night scene. We can decrease the sun multiplier or disable it entirely. And also decrease the intensity of the skylight and make its color colder. Feel free to make adjustments to the other lights as you see fit. Remember to be cautious when increasing the intensity multiplier as it can introduce noise into the image if it's too high. Once we're happy with our image, let's explore the composite section of the V-Ray frame buffer. Switching to the composite section doesn't carry over the changes made in the light mix. This is because we're using the Back to Beauty approach, 
which reconstructs the image by adding its individual elements, the beauty render elements. You'll see that we have a stack of these elements that we can control individually. If you want to use the result from the light mix and continue working on it in the composite, switch back to light mix mode, then send the result to the composite section. But this means you won't be able to control reflections or global illumination separately. Alternatively, you can hit the two scene button to transfer all changes from the light mix to the lights in the scene. This will reset your light mix adjustments. But when you re-render the image, all the changes will be baked into the render. Then, in the composite section, you have full control over the beauty render elements. For instance, we can add an exposure layer to the reflections component. Note the small arrow indicating that this color correction only affects the layer directly below it. If you want to correct the reflections of only a specific object, you can add a crypto matte mask again. You can add a crypto matte mask by either right-clicking on the layer or by clicking on the icon and adding a mask from it. Let's select the cars from the render. This will increase the reflections only on them. Finally, we can add some sharpening to our image to make the details stand out even more. Also, let's turn on the lens effects, which add some nice bloom and glare to the image, making the brightest parts of the image appear softer and more appealing. When you're happy with your image, save it using the Save icon. It's a good idea to save your final image as a PNG because it maintains quality better than a JPEG and is easy to share. You can also save your image in the History tab. Hit the H key to open the History tab, and saving your image here will preserve much more information about it, including all the render elements. This way you can load the image from history later and make any changes in the V-Ray frame buffer. When you open the VFB history for the first time, the buttons will appear grayed out. To fix this, Hit the S key on your keyboard to open the VFB settings, then head to the History section and enable it. If the Use Project Path option is enabled, all images will be stored in a folder named VFB underscore History, where your Rhino file is located. You can uncheck this and manually specify a location to store the images. Once you're all set, save and close the settings. All right, let's explore one last feature that lets us share our image for review. Inside the V-Ray Asset Editor, hit this arrow to reveal some more buttons. Then tap on this icon. It'll open the Chaos Cloud Collaboration tab. From here, we can create a new project and upload our render to the cloud. Now you can view your render in the browser. You can rename it, add comments and annotations, and send an invite to other people, including non-users, to review it. You can also get a shareable link. This is a great way to share your work with clients and coworkers. That wraps up our tutorial. Thanks for sticking with me until the end. By now, you should be able to use the many post-processing tools in the V-Ray frame buffer to make stunning images. Remember to check out the rest of the videos from our beginner series for V-Ray for Rhino, or take a look at our blog and documentation for more tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. See you soon.